Good morning. It's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, and we hope and pray this will be the best Father's Day ever. We thank God how he gives us men in our lives to make a difference, and we always thank God for our Heavenly Father. The Word of the Lord tells us out of Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. May we pray. Gracious God, we come on this day to say thank you for allowing us to see it. Thank you for the men in our lives. Thank you for fathers. We thank you for being our heavenly father. Now we ask that you would guide us throughout this day and it's in your son Jesus name we pray. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We do hope and pray that this will be one of your best Father's Day ever. And we want to remind all of those children, please make sure you take a moment to tell your fathers, tell your father figures, thank you for what you have done for me. And even more so, make sure you pause and tell our Heavenly Father, thank you for what he's done for us. Well, you know, on a day like today, Father's Day, it's time that many people have so many different mixed emotions about fatherhood and about manhood. You know, as we begin to focus on this time today, you know, you can't help but think about all the men and all the great works they've done in, in this community and throughout the world. We're ever grateful for all of those men who stood up to stand the test of time, even in the midst of adversity, they were strong men. They were valiant men. They were men of integrity. And we're so grateful that God still gives us great men of integrity. I'm ever mindful of how God has done so much in the life of so many families. Had it not been for those fathers, none of us would probably be here today. And I'm just so grateful. Today, I always want to pause and thank God for the memory of my father, Leroy Anderson Sr. And for all that he did for us to bring us up in a nurturing environment. Uh, we were not rich. Um, we didn't know how poor we were, but we were rich in love and we were rich in God's grace. And I'm forever grateful to he and my mom who created a home environment. And today, I hope you will take a moment to pause to thank God for your father. If your father is still here on this planet called Earth, take some time. Make it be a day that's easy, a day that's not full of heavy stuff, a day where you can just surround him and tell him thank you. Ask him what he would like to do, what he would like to eat, all those wonderful things that he would love to do. Share that time with your dad. It's a day in which you and I can pause and we can say, God, we thank you for manhood, but we thank you for fatherhood. Today, I want to invite you to look with me into God's word to find out some nuggets of truth that God has in store for us. The book of Romans, the fifth chapter, verses one through eight from the New Living Translation. And it reads this way. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. We now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to the sharing of God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead us to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us his Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly hopeless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. May we pray. Father, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, O Lord, for being our strength and our redeemer. We pray for your guidance throughout this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Today I want to talk about for the next few moments, one thing leads to another. One thing leads to another. In our text today, we begin to read and as we find out how God does everything in his perfect timing. You know, God has always been an on-time God. 
You know, we sing that song, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. God has been on time from the beginning of time, even up until this moment in time. It is, a, it is unfortunate that some of us believe and some of us have the tendency to believe that we can just pray and ask God to show up like a genie that's coming out of a bottle. But the text reminds us that God doesn't work that way. God shows up at just the right time. And he takes his time so that we can learn, so we can develop character, so we can develop principles, so we can understand what is the true purpose and the meaning that God has placed us here on this planet. Now today, I hope you'll make room for God to come into your space. And as he speaks to us today, let's remember that one thing leads to another. A text opens up and it helps us to see that uh, since we have been made right in the sight of God by faith, this text begins to remind us it was all because of Abraham and the faith that he had in believing God and trusting God, even in the midst of his situation. You know, the Bible begins us that as it begins to share with us how Abraham believed God and it was attributed to him. It was accounted unto him for being righteous. This text lets us see that God saw where we were and he put us in the right position because of the faith that we have in him. Now, all of us must understand that obedience to God's will is very important, but we must also have faith. The scripture teaches us without faith, it is impossible to please God. For those who come to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Today, as we begin to unfold this text on a day in which we call Father's Day in this United States of America, a time in which we recognize how God has used fathers to do great things, but we know it's because God is our heavenly father and he gives us the model of what fatherhood should be like. So it lets us see that first of all, it is by faith that God justify us, that we have been made right. You know, the faith that we have in God is the kind of faith that allows us to realize that God loves us in such a way that he will never allow us to be in a situation in which he will not be there with us. You know, when we begin to think about fatherhood and we look at the course of this United States of America and we look at the world and we see how so many men, those who have done their ample best and their very best to be a father to their children, found themselves being plagued with situations and circumstances that sometimes made it impossible. When we begin to think about the plight of what has happened to so many men, we must ask ourselves the question, God, I'm so grateful that you were able to hear and answer their prayers. And in some situations, the prayers that God answered was that he sent someone else to be a father figure to that person. Today we find out it is God's uh, faith, it is our faith in God that God puts us in the right place. Secondly, it says that we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ did for us at Calvary. You know, God being our heavenly father, he always wanted to have a father relationship with us, just as he did with Adam and Eve. He met them every morning in the cool of the day before it got too hot, and he was with them uh, at the evening. He always started out the day with them. He ended up the day with them with a the walk. I can remember growing up how sometimes my family in the evenings, we would go for an evening walk. You know, back in the day when uh, everybody lived in the neighborhood and everybody knew each other, you never even have to worry about locking your doors. We would all go for an evening stroll. It was always great to understand the conversations that would be going on, how mom and dad would be talking. We would all be talking. We would laugh. We would have a joyous time together. This text begins to remind me and helps to re reflect and recount upon the times in which you and I can have a walk with our heavenly father, but also have a walk with our earthly father. We have peace with God. God gives us that peace. You know, it is in those strolls, those moments that Adam and Eve had with God. It is those moments, those evenings, those strolls that we've had with our heavenly father and our natural fathers that we can find a point of peace. Have you ever realized that sometimes in, in, in many of our lives as men, there is always a situation, quote unquote, there might always appear to be a problem that needs to be resolved. But this text begins to let us see how God wants us to understand that we have a place of peace with him. We have a place of tranquility. We have the peace because God has done the work for us by sending our elder brother, Jesus Christ, to come on the scene. Well, you know, what Jesus did for us was that he offered his life. He died, but not only did he die. 
but he was resurrected with all power in his hand to help us have the relationship with the heavenly father that we need to have. This text begins to remind us as God has done all the work for us, how God has put us in a relationship with him that he is always ready and open to hear our voices and for us to listen to him. In the text, it lets us see that Jesus Christ has done all of this for us because of our faith. Christ brought us into a place of undeserved privilege that we now stand. Now, you know, the Bible reminds us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, whenever we begin to think about that, it causes all of us to take some reflection. We have to think about how we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, none of us have been perfect fathers. None of us had perfect fathers in our lives, but we did have a perfect heavenly father in our life. The one who was always there, the one who always gave us the insightful words that we needed. This text begins to allow us to see how we're in a place of undeserved privilege. You know, we oftentimes get in a place of undeserved privilege by using our father's name. You know, whenever we use the name of our heavenly father, he opens up doors for us. You know, I can remember in the natural that many times that um, I needed to go someplace or something needed to happen. I was always reminded to tell folk who my father was, who is my dad. And when people know who your dad is and when your dad has a place of prominence and position, when your dad has a place of respect, that brings about a transformation in our lives. You know, today, I hope you and I can think about uh, God as being that father who always tells us we can use his name. You know, it is so important for us to use the power of our father's name. Now, my father's last name is Anderson, which makes me an Anderson. So I can use the name Anderson, which identifies me with the group that I am affiliated and born into. Now, when we realize this, it tells us something about the power of a name, but we must remind ourselves that's in the natural, but we have a name, the name of God, our father, that carries a whole lot of weight. It's a name that whenever you call that name, everybody stands at attention. The text lets us see here that we're in a place of privilege that is undeserved. You know, we oftentimes find ourselves making error upon error, mistake upon mistake. But God loves us in so much so that he forgives us of our sins. Today, I hope that there might be a father out there listening. And it doesn't matter what may have gone wrong in your family's life. We can always put this thing on the right road. That is by asking God to give us the direction, give us the guidance. The sex, it helps us to see that we're in a place that we now stand that is a privileged place. You know, whenever we're standing, that says something about us. You know, it is always important for we as men, as fathers, for us to stand in a position where our children can see that our faith and our trust is in Almighty God. Our daughters, our sons need to know that our fathers are standing on the promises. You know, in this text, I can't help but think about how God wants us to stand firm. You know, it is it is so exciting to see men who will stand up for what they believe and to make sure their beliefs are anchored and centered in biblical truth and that what they stand and believe for does not hurt people, does not take advantage of any group, but it puts everybody in proper position. You know, in the world in which we live today, we find out so many people will stand for things. Sometimes they stand for things that they can't find biblical credence to stand upon, but they just stand on it because that's what they believe. Look at what's happening throughout the world, how people are standing for their belief that they can conquer another group of people, how they can take advantage of others, how laws don't apply to them. But this text reminds us that all of us stand in a place of undeserved privilege. That is because of God's grace and God's mercy. This text helps me to fully understand that we can confidently and joyfully look towards our heavenly father because he has great glory to celebrate with us. You know, 
Every year about this time, we have the Fatherhood Conference that is that is put on here in the Triangle. It's a great time when men have come together from all walks of life. We've had workshops. We've had seminars. We talked about how we can become good fathers, how we can become good husbands, how we can be good contributors into our community. You know, when I read this text, it lets us see that God places us in a position, a position where we can stand a position where we can position ourselves to say, it is God Almighty who's doing the work in me and not me myself. You know, when we realize that it is God's grace and God's mercy that puts us in a favorite position, then you behave a little bit differently. Well, you know, when you realize that you're in a place that you didn't earn it, it's a place that was given to you because it was a grace gift by God. You walk a little bit differently. You act a little bit differently. You know, it could have been the other way. It's like the people who used to always say it could have been the other way, but God so fit and God saw it to be so that he allowed us to be here today. This text helps us. It tells us in verse three so we can rejoice when we run into problems. You know, in the world in which we live, there are so many problems. There are so many challenging situations. But God tells us the problems and the trials that come our way are there for a purpose. They help us to develop endurance. You know, when situations come, it develops in us what we never would have believed was there. I can remember years ago, back in the days of, 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 of flash photography and photo photography, when you would develop your own film. And the way you had to do that was that after you had cranked the film out of the roll, out of the camera, and then you place it in the cylinder, you put it in all the solution, and then when it starts to develop, it develops right before your eyes. You ask yourself the question, how can that be? Well, this text begins to remind us that many of us, God is developing us as we go through difficult situations. Oftentimes in our lives, we don't want to face any challenges. We don't want to face any difficulties. But the text reminds us when these situations come, they come to develop us. It helps us to have the full color of what God would have us to be. You know, when God is developing us, he does it through and by giving us moments to test our knowledge. So when trials and when tribulations come, they come to test our knowledge. As men and as fathers, there come moments in our lives where we have to learn to say no and be firm with our no's. We have to say yes and be firm with our yeses. And sometimes it doesn't make everybody happy, but it's the thing that has to happen. The text lets us see God sends us these situations to develop endurance and endurance strengthens our character. You know, the world in which we live, we need to be able to develop young boys into being men of character. And that means we have to be tested to prove that we are who we are and that we're made out of the right stuff. You know, it's always amazing when we get to this part of the year, we've had just uh, we've really had all the graduations of all the high schools. And now we find kids have been promoted from one grade level to the next. And now they're tracked out for the summer. Some of them, it all depends on what track of school that you're in. But even in the summer, we have to be tested on the information that we've learned prior to. I can remember growing up as a child during the summer months, we still had to do some kind of homework. We still had to work on the academic uh, prowess that God had given to us. We have to make sure that we remember all of those mathematic equations to keep them fresh in our mind. We have to make sure that we're doing all the things to keep our information and our knowledge sharp. And that comes through and by testing. You know, God always allows us to be tested. That proves that we know our information and that we got it deep down on the inside. You know, whenever you're given a test, it's important for us to know, first of all, how to take the test and how to pass the test with a passing grade. You know, it's important for us to learn from the challenging situations that we find in our lives. You know, I was just listening on a prayer call the other day about a gentleman who was sharing about the mistakes that he made in his life. But then he talked about now he learned to do some things differently. You know, every day you and I can learn from our previous mistakes to do it better and to do it differently the next time. The text talks about it developed character and character develops the confidence and our hope of salvation. This text is a text about progression. 
how in many of our lives uh, we have hopes, we have beliefs that God is going to do great things. And we don't have to have the disappointments when we put our hope in almighty God. When we know that God loves us, he loves us with an unconditional love. He loves us in such a way that he has given to us his spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us and guides us. It begins to be the one that when we allow those who are to make decisions about life and living, we must pray for them. Those who are elected officials, those who are guiding our homes, we must pray God infuse them with your spirit that they'll make the right decisions. Well, you know, when we make the right decisions, it is then that we all have to get on board with God, our father. When God tells us that one thing leads to another, he's developing within us our character. He's developing within us our faith. He's developing with us our perseverance. And you know, when we have all of this developing into us, we become the person, the man, we become the woman of God that God would have us to be. When all of us, men and women, boys and girls, allow circumstances and situations to be a lesson that we can learn from, it is then that we'll know that God is doing great and marvelous things. In our text, it begins to remind us that one thing leads to another. It lets us see that when God knows who we are, when God identifies with who we are and remind us that we are his child, it is then he does something great in our lives. He allows us to go from one degree of grace to the other one. He allows us to go from one success to the next one. He allows us to remain humble because everyone's pride will bring them low. In this text, he begins to remind us how God is going to do great and marvelous things in our lives because he wants us to do one thing that will lead to another successful event. Today, I don't know about you, but my prayer has always been, God, let me be a successful illustration of what it means to be a man who loves and obeys God and one who can be a good example before my children and all others. You know, fatherhood is not for the faint of heart. Fatherhood sometimes means that decisions that are made, everybody loves. Sometimes decisions that are made, folk become unhappy. But I'm so happy that our Heavenly Father made a decision to send His Son Jesus. That was a real Father's Day. It showed the love of a father like never before. The love that God has for us, that he loves us in such a way, he gave us his very best. Not only did he give us of himself, but he gave his son. Today, if you don't know Jesus, I invite you to receive him. All you have to do is say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and save me. Make me into the kind of person you would have me to be. And especially on a Father's Day, make me the kind of father I need to be for my children and other children to use as an example. Today, after you've done that, let us know. Email us at join at the fountain of Raleigh.org to let us know that you have joined that band. You've joined that number of men and women, boys and girls who have received Christ. And today, if you want us to pray for you and pray with you, we would love to pray with you. You can email us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org. And we'd love to take your prayer request to Almighty God. And I know he hears and I know he answers. Today, I want to remind you that one thing leads to another. When we make the decision to accept Christ as our Savior, it leads us to being the example that God would have us to be. It leads us to being the kind of men that God will say, those are my men, the men who stand up for what's right and who want to do the right thing before their families as well as with our community. Today, I hope and pray you'll make this the best Father's Day ever by acknowledging God as your heavenly father, and then make sure all of us as men become the father figure that we can be in our community, not just to our children, but to others as well. Remember one thing leads to another. Whenever we do that, it leads us to greater opportunities to share the goodness of the gospel. It leads us to greater opportunities to mentor young boys and mentor young men, how they can become the leaders and the protectors of our community and the protectors of the faith that we too can guard it and share it with the next generation. I want to remind you that you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed and God has a great blessing in store for you in this year of 20 and 23. It will be bigger and better than you ever thought it would be. Let's end our time the way we started. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for blessing us to be here. We thank you for another opportunity to highlight 
the goodness that you have shown to us. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father who gives us the example of sacrifice, of commitment, of dedication. Now, God, we pray that you would allow us to become the examples of you on earth, that we can show commitment, dedication, and sacrifice, that we might preserve this community which you've given to us to serve it. Now, Lord, we ask that your blessed spirit will lead and guide us and protect us until we meet again. Now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless you in your leisure, your labor, your joys, and your sorrow, and give you bright hope for today as well as tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And take the Lord with you everywhere you go. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.